opportunity for you all to have a really rich STEM experience in the next uh, we're gonna but uh you all are the first group that we will have today for this experience so at this time I'm going to turn things over to your attention ask lots of questions participate when it's time to participate and um, there'll be some some PBIS and some rewards waiting for you at the end of this. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Lewis. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Assistant Principal Williams, and thank you so much to Principal Morris. Uh, we are so grateful to all of you. Thank you for giving us your time and attention. With this day, we want to focus, we've got some partners who we're gonna just go ahead and call friends now. Yes. Um, together with these partners, we would like to focus on you and bringing resources to you, talking to you about opportunities and everything. As you all have already distinguished yourselves, as Ms. Williams mentioned, yes. as uh, the cream of the crop, we want to make sure that uh, we're sharing about all the opportunities that will be available to you. And so with that, I want to introduce you to some of our partners who have come. We have the special um, privilege of having Dr. Jerome Adams, who's former uh, Surgeon General for the United States here to speak to you, as well as <laughs> Absolutely. As well as Tony Pearson from the Lilly from. Eli Lilly Corporation, who's going to talk to you about careers and research. We as well have Faith Spencer and right here. <laughs> Faith Spencer and uh, Mr. Scott Sloan, who will both talk to you about what it means to, to uh, get into careers in, uh, in STEM. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Adams. All right. <laughs> Hello, how is everyone? Good. Does anyone know what a Surgeon General is or does? No. No? So first of all, I am a doctor. Um, second of all, I, I hope you all know that smoking is bad for your health. Well, the Surgeon General was the one who helped America understand that smoking was bad for your health. If you look on the side of a box of cigarettes or on the side of a box of any tobacco product, there is a Surgeon General's warning that says, warning, smoking is hazardous to your health. So I was the Surgeon General of the United States. There have been 20 people who have served in that role in the last 150 years, and I was just the second African-American male to serve as Surgeon General. And I put these up to show you some of the uh, people I got to meet and things I got to do as Surgeon General of the United States. Who knows who that is? That's not Joe Biden, but you're, you're not far off. That's actually Bill Clinton. He was uh, president of the United States um, before Joe Biden was president of the United States a while ago. So that's Bill Clinton. He was a former president. In that picture, I'm next to who? President Trump. Donald Trump, and that's also the president of France, um, Emmanuel Macron. So I got to meet the president of France and, and Donald Trump. And, and here, you see me holding up my inhaler. So I'm not going to call anybody out, but I know statistically speaking, some of you all in this room have asthma. I've had asthma since I was about seven or eight years old. And uh, I didn't believe that I was ever going to grow up to be able to be a successful professional because uh, I was so sick that I didn't even know if I was going to live to be an adult, number one. Number two, I grew up, um, my parents didn't have a lot of money. We struggled sometimes to put food on the table. Uh, there are people in my family who have been incarcerated, including my own brother. My own brother has been uh, in jail multiple times due to crimes he committed to support his addiction. And so I come from a background uh, where uh, there's more around me to lead me down an unfortunate path than what there was an example of the right things to do. And that's why it was so important for me to come here and speak with you all today, 
because I never believed I could be a doctor, much less Surgeon General of the United States in the White House um, advising the President of the United States. And it wasn't because I didn't have the aptitude. I had straight A's throughout school. And all of you all had the aptitude. I hope you understand that. Do you know what aptitude means? Aptitude means the ability. The ability to be anything that you want to be. I had the aptitude, but I didn't have the vision because I'd never met a black doctor in my life until I got to college. And so I didn't want you all to be in the same situation I am. Um, by the grace of God, I was able to continue down a good pathway and ultimately uh, met a black physician, Dr. Ben Carson, who some of you all may know when I was in college. And that's when I decided to go into medical school. But I wanted you all to see me and understand that you can be anything you want to be in. Maybe it's a doctor, maybe it's a nurse, maybe it's a pharmacist, maybe it's an engineer, but I want you to know that not only can you be anything that you want to be, and that there are people who have your lived experience like me um, who achieved great things, but also that there's this great program called 21st Century Scholars. Uh, and if you don't know about it, I ask you to talk to your teachers and to your parents about it. 21st Century Scholars is a program because many people want to go to college and don't believe they can afford it. In Indiana, if you sign up for it, you've got to sign up for it before the end of your eighth grade year. Um, if you do all the things you're supposed to do, then it's a scholarship to go to an Indiana school. And so you all can go to a school like Purdue, where I work right now. You can become an engineer. Uh, one of our greatest astronauts, the first man to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong, went to Purdue University. You all can go to the same school that he went to um, through the 21st Century Scholars Program. So. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about today, and I'm going to be here for questions for you all, but uh, I just wanted to get the chance to meet you all and to say thank you for allowing me to be your United States Surgeon General, because that's what I want you to also know, is that every single one of these people up here, well, except for Emmanuel Macron, he's French, everyone else up there, uh, the presidents, the Surgeon General, we work for you. We work for you all. It's our job to represent you all and to create a country that you all can be proud of. But that only happens in a democracy when you participate, when you vote, when you're educated, when you are at the table. Because there's a saying, if you're not at the table, you're going to be on the menu. Mm -hmm. And I want you all to be in a position that you're at the table, just like I was able to be at the table. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over to the other speakers, because I don't want to hog all the time up. But again, I'm here for you all. You want to talk about anything, if you want to know anything about my journey uh, as an asthmatic, as someone um, who went, went to medical school, as someone who, uh, again, knew Donald Trump and Bill Clinton, people of both parties, I'm happy to talk with you all about that, okay? Good afternoon. Hey, it's good to be here with you guys. Is it good to be here with me? Yes. Okay, I'm just checking. I want to make sure I'm in the right place. I want to thank, where's Tracy? I want to thank Tracy for the opportunity to be here, the assistant principal, wherever she is. Thank you for the opportunity to be at this school. But you guys, thank you for your attention. I appreciate your attention. I'm only going to be before you a short while. Now, like the doctor, he doesn't mind hogging time. I, 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 I don't mind hogging time, but I'm not selfish. There's only a couple of things that I want to share with you today. And I want you to remember, any one of these things is going to put you in a really good space. So if I say fair enough, you say fair enough, Scott. Fair enough? Fair enough, Scott. Just check and make sure you're awake. So real quick, STEM. How many of you all have heard of STEM? Great, I'm in the right place. Short version, if you're not learning STEM as you go forward in, in your career, you're going to be working for someone who does. And guess what? You might not be working because they have pizza places that work with no human intervention. You hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. That's part number one. Part number two, I am a Purdue engineering degree, uh, uh, student, graduate. I graduated in industrial engineering in 1988. I know I look good. <laughs> <laughs> but something that I, girl, what you laughing at? <laughs> something I learned. A manager, when I was on their co-op program, said, engineers can be managers, but most managers can't be engineers. Because at the time, I was an industrial management student. So I changed my major. It was going to be tough. It was going to be rough, but I did the hard thing. Do the hard thing. It's not always easy, but it's always worth it. Number three, as you consider going into 
STEM careers. Look at how you can become entrepreneurs. Say entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. That means owning your own business. It's not always about working for somebody else. Sometimes you have to change the world by setting your own course, setting your own path. Does that make sense? Yes. Fair enough? Yes, Thank you all for, for cooperating. Next, something I learned years ago. Make yourself indispensable. Has anyone heard this word? Who knows what indispensable means? Okay, I'll help you. Something you can't do without. Position yourselves. Learn something. Get a talent. Get a skill. Get information. Because you're only going to be remembered for one or two things. The problems you solve or the problems you create. Mm. Mm. Last two points. Attitude makes everything. I can deal with a person who's willing to learn, doesn't know as much with a great attitude than somebody who knows everything with a horrible attitude. Last but not least, there's only one industry on the planet. Anybody know what that industry is? Let me hear you. Somebody, what industry? One industry. Take a guess. Be bold. STEM, he at least he guessed. Let's give him a hand. How many of you all have heard of the auto industry? It's car industry, people. You heard of healthcare industry. You've heard, well, there's only one industry, and that is the people industry. If you learn to respect people, meet people where they are, and solve problems for them, life will go well for you. Ladies and gentlemen, like the doctor, and I'm going to tell you, I, I'm pretty, I want a picture, man, you know, because this is a guy, we talk about being an, an example. Sometimes we don't know there's different because we haven't seen different. Well, he's different. You got an engineer. I'm, I, I'm different, but I'm still here, and we're here to serve you. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention, and you all have an awesome day. Y'all, I'm just 22, so uh, listen. I want people. I want you guys to first understand that just because you're young doesn't mean you can't make a difference and make a change. Uh, that's something that I constantly uh, interface with people saying, "Oh, like, wh what are you doing? Like, who are you? Like, what are what are you about to do?" And I just want you guys to know that that's not the case. That you can make a difference. Uh, with that being said, my name is Faith Spencer. I grew up here in Gary, Indiana, but I graduated from Hobart High School, which is about 10 minutes away, and I'm a current senior at Purdue University, double majoring in cybersecurity and network engineering, Ooh, woo, woo. Organizational leadership, as well as pursuing a certificate of entrepreneurship and innovation, and I graduate in 17 days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but to add to that, I am also the current president and CEO of Ironworks Corporation, which is a nonprofit organization that is here to help you all. Um, in which I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a second, but just to give you a little bit more about my past, um, like I, I grew up in this very building. Uh, my mom worked down the hallway, and so this is really crazy to me to be back here, especially so soon. Uh, but it's really cool that I get to hang out with you guys today. Uh, so I ended up moving, and that was because the U.S. Marshals raided our home looking for the drug dealer next door, and so I want you guys to understand that just because things happen negatively, don't let that impact what it is that you want to set out to do, right? Um, I didn't let that stop me. Obviously, it was a little intimidating watching an AK-47 beings, you know, stare down at my mom's chest, but it's something that you have to understand and work through and move forward, right? And so with that being said, I had the opportunity to go out and uh, become an entrepreneur. I started a business my senior year of high school. I raised over $10,000 in the span of three months, and that's something that I want to teach you guys how to do, essentially. And so uh, with Ironworks Corporation, we're here to help and help bridge that gap on equity issues in terms of learning what it means to be an entrepreneur and do realize that you don't have to become an entrepreneur. It's just important to have that mindset, right? There's a lot of different things about entrepreneurship in which uh, different pathways that you can use to do whatever it is that you want to do. So rather that's be an engineer, you want to go into finance, you want to do something with the arts, being able to know how to manage yourself, stay organized, stay on time, these are all important aspects, as well as communication. Um, and that's just like a little bit about me. I don't want to be up here all day either. 
I don't want to bore you guys, but I will be doing a little demonstration with you guys today that will help with communication, um, and I look forward to it. Right, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Appreciate the energy. My name is Tony Pearson, and I have the, the fortune of being a senior director of diversity and inclusion in clinical trials. We'll talk about that in a moment. It's the best job that Eli Lilly has to offer. Um, we have uh, some, some team members here today that are going to talk to you a little bit more about the clinical trial process. My first question, though, is who knows what Eli Lilly is and what we do? Just a guess. Hazard a guess. If not, I'm going to pick on people because my mom was is a, was a principal, worked for the school board, and I have no issue with calling people out and having them participate. Hey, sir, what's your name? Nicholas, what's your name, sir? Charles, got it, okay. Go ahead, what, what's Eli Lilly, what do we do? Medicine, but not correct. Charles, there's, there's, you can't even say that. Okay, all right, that's a little, 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 uh, a little different there. Thank you very much. So, that is, that is exactly what we do. We do a whole lot more to actually make that process happen, especially are focused on making life better, right? And so you have, family members that have uh, different issues, different diseases, and we get a chance to play a, a large part in making sure that we can evolve science to be able to help deal with some of those conditions, right? To extend life, to improve the quality of life, right? Because that's hard to go through life and have, have different infirmities that you have to deal with, right? Different things you're dealing with, and try to be a whole person, try to be able to contribute to you all. Any, I, I won't ask you to answer this question, but just think about the things that maybe your parents go through, or your friends go through, right? and how it affects their lives. And so we get a chance to play a role in sort of making that, that sort of life better. The question I'd ask of you next is, who wants to be? So talk about being inspired. Dr. Adams, inspiration, right? So as a physician, Surgeon General, right? That, like that's a hard path to follow, but there are a whole host of paths that one can take. Anybody want to be a, a doctor here? Nobody? That's fair. That's okay. Any, anybody anybody want to be a lawyer? One lawyer. Okay, great. Anybody want to be a nurse? Let me ask you differently. What do you want to do? Yes, sir. Astronaut. Astronaut. Phenomenal. For New University we talked about, right? Most yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you want to do? Basketball player. That's cool. Okay. That, that's actually phenomenal. Anyone else? What do you want to do? I can't hear you. Say it again. Game designer. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I remember growing up, my parents would be like, Anthony, Tony, Anthony, get off those video games. Now we're making a ton of money being able to do that. I say all that to say that you can find things you want to do that can align to your passion, and you can go have an impact on the world. And so each one of us here get a chance to do that every day over at Lilith. So what we'll talk to you today about is the high-level clinical trial process. So you talk about making medicines. What's that process look like? We'll keep it high enough, right? We'll keep it general enough, but we want you to walk out of here and be wiser for Eli Lilly being in this community in the state, right, about what that process is. We'll talk about clinical trial diversity, an, a major initiative at the federal government level and, and across the world to make sure that we're not underrepresented in that process of making medicines, right? We need to be involved in that process and then career paths associated with that. Again, each one of the skill sets that are associated with basketball may be a bit outside of the norm, but we have a ton of former athletes that work at Eli Lilly and Company, and the things that they've been able to overcome, right, allows them to kind of help, help us kind of meet our challenges, right? We talk about game designing. We have an entire in engineers, right, that are, that are sort of thoughtful in the way that we design our processes to sort of speed medications and make sure that they're, they have an element of quality. So you can pick anything that you want to do, and I can imagine that there's a way to relate it back to be able to do something at Eli Lilly and Company that supports making medicines, but also allows you to connect to your purpose and your passion. We look forward to talking to you about that a little bit today. Is that is that fair? Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Fair enough. Thank, Tony. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> I tried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hey everybody. I'm not going to talk to you all too long. Can everybody raise their right hand? Everybody in this room has an opportunity to go to college. Oh, all right. Everybody <laughs> hand up. Got an opportunity. Yeah. Clap it up. Each and every one of you. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna have a little fun. We're gonna have ten students follow Miss Catherine. They're gonna take you outside to the unit. 
the other 10 student, 10 students are going to stay in the room and Faith Spencer is going to do a demonstration and then we also have Eli Lilly here for questions, okay? Another 10 students. So, hi, my name is Madeline. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Cool. All right, my name is Madeline Stancic. I'm a senior associate at Eli Lilly and Company, so I get to work with people like Tony on making medicines to make lives better for people. Uh, I have a really cool job that involves uh, community screening. So I don't know if you saw, but we have a giant truck out front. And basically, instead of people having to come to us for a clinical trial, we're going to bring it to them. And so that's kind of what we do with our capability. Um, and it allows us to go where the people are and to find the need and to screen people for trials and get them involved as fast as possible. So if you're coming with me, you're going to come and see. Nashaya Jennings, please report to the main office for dismissal. Nashaya Jennings to the main office for dismissal. So when you come to our station, I'm going to show you around our vehicle. Oh, thank you. Okay. Can't hear me in the back. <laughs> so. Um, when you come to my station and come to the MRU, we're going to go and look at the truck a little bit. We're going to see what we're able to do on this truck. Um, one thing I would ask is that you, if you have a cell phone, please leave it here. You cannot have it on the truck. So I don't know if you guys have phones yet or not, but please don't bring it. <laughs> so anyway, we'll talk a little bit more about clinical trials, but we're excited to show you our mobile research unit. <laughs> 